Kia ora tata. reading from Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 34. This does include the parable of the sower. It will not be as entertaining as Caitlin's version. <laughs> Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat, at it, sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying thirty, some sixty, some a hundred times. Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding, otherwise they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, And the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed grown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Some thirty, some sixty, some a hundred times what was sown. He said to them, Do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on its stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. Consider carefully what you hear, he continued. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and even more. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken away from them. He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he doesn't know how. All by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like, or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable, but when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. For reading that so well, Adele. Uh, kia ora everyone, my name's Dave. Get that out of the way. So great to have you with us as we delve into this passage. Uh, you'll notice I can walk today, that's nice. Uh, thank you so much for <laughs> those who've prayed, uh, those who have dropped meals off, those who have messaged and called and uh, just let me know that you're thinking and praying for me. It's been a real treasure to be a part of a body that's loved us so well. Um, I'm hoping that things will continue to improve and I'll continue to um, be able to walk. It's quite nice. Um, Let's pray together as we uh, jump into this part of the word. Um, We've already talked about the sermon notes. If you want one of those, there's one right here. Stick your hand up and someone will get that to you. Um, But 
Otherwise, let's pray and jump into this beautiful part of the Bible. Father, we give you great thanks and praise. Uh, We lift our hearts to you as we have read your word. You've spoken to us by your spirit. Now we ask as we dig into it more together, as we explore it, you'd whisper to us. You'd reveal your mysteries. Uh, You'd show us your love. Would you help every word that comes out of my mouth uh, to help us all to encounter the Lord Jesus in a more real and vivid way? In his name we pray. Amen. Well, this is our lime tree. This is our lime tree. It's not much to look at, um, but this lime tree is nothing short of a miracle. Uh, yes, it's, a, it's just a little lime tree. It's, about, it's actually about half the size that it was when we bought it. Um, there's no fruit. It's now a year old. There is no fruit. There is no flowers. There's not even the hint of fruit ever to come. But outside of a miracle, it would look like this. Such are the gardening skills of the Giesbers. Uh, we're not green-fingered gardeners. Um, see, our gift in the garden, it is to test things. Um, and uh, the, poor, the poor plants that, that get there, uh, they get tested. We bought this lime tree, and I carefully potted it. You see its nice pot that it's got. It's got lovely soil around it. Uh, and then we kind of sat it in a nice place. I looked on the internet to see, you know, how much sun, how much shade, kind of. Uh, and then the soccer balls started to fly. And the branches started to break off. Uh, soon there was just this little stump, this tall, with one little tiny shoot coming off. And I thought, I've got to water this thing. And so I did. I watered it. And then the sun shone. And I forgot to water it. And um, the poor little shoots coming off drooped. And I thought, this is, it's all over, this poor little lime tree. And so I just thought, stuff it. <laughs> I'm going to get a new one. And um, so I'd already planned my little trip down to the garden store. I'd, I'd planned it. I was off to go. And, but we ran out of time. It was just before we went on holiday in January. And I ran out of time. And we came back on holiday. And it looks like this. And I thought, man, this is amazing. How did it get like this? I have no idea. It's a mystery. It's a secret. And as we pick up in the book of Mark, as as we pick up in our series asking the question, who is this Jesus? Well, it's all about this mystery of growing, this mystery of of Jesus' growing kingdom. And over the last few chapters, uh, Mark has been introducing us to Jesus, this, this king of God's kingdom. We've seen his authority, his compassion. We've watched as opposition has risen against him. We've heard about the new salvation that he offers to all who trust in him. Rescue from sin, forgiveness for all who come to Jesus. We've learned what it means to become part of his family, haven't we? So our introduction to Jesus, this, this king of God's kingdom, it's within reach. You see, we can, we, can, we can see it. We can grab hold of this introduction. We've got it in our heads. And then Mark pours it. And he says, okay, enough of the king for a moment. I want you to know about the kingdom. See, and, and, and we hear about this kingdom through these parables, these stories that we've just been reading through together. Now, you might have heard of parables. What are they? They're an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Have you heard that? Uh, well, if that's what this is, then an earthly, earthly story, there's seeds and there's soil and there's growing and there's plants and there's whatever, a farming illustration for a farming nation maybe, but with a heavenly meaning, something to do with this growing kingdom that is Jesus. Except that, except Jesus says he's using parables a, a particular way. Did you notice as we read through? He says he's using parables because not everyone will understand. That's the whole point. Mark chapter 4, looking at verse 11. Read it with me. Mark 4, 11 and 12. He told them, this is Jesus, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, that's the disciples, but to those on the outside, everything is said in parables so that 
they may be ever seeing but never perceiving and ever hearing but never understanding otherwise they might turn and be forgiven see verse 12 here it's quoting from Isaiah and, and the prophet Isaiah and, and God is saying in, in, this prophet, in this passage in Isaiah he's saying um, seeing and hearing but never understanding that's judgment that's a, a judgment that God has handed out to his people who have rejected him. It's judgment for rejecting God over and over and over and over and over again. It's a judgment that leads to not understanding, not being able to understand that this is Jesus and he is God's king. That he's offering life and hope. So this teaching and parables teaching in parables, Jesus is giving people something to chew over, something to mull on, something to deeply consider, something that will ultimately show, well, it, will, it will ultimately show, do, do, you, do you know Jesus? Do you want to know him? Do you want to follow him? Or are you turning and running? Are you turning away? And, and these parables, they Starts, they start with a famous one. <laughs> well, we've had them told quite well this morning, haven't we? And Jesus wants to make sure before he starts that he has our attention. Did you notice? Chapter 4, verse 3. Listen. Listen. Like a teacher. Listen with your ears. Or as Rachel might say to me sometimes, put your phone down. Listen with your eyes. I want to make sure that, you're, that I'm, I'm talking to you. I'd never do that. But because this mystery of how to get into Jesus' growing kingdom, Jesus is saying this mystery, it's all about our hearts. Mark 4, 3 to 8. Let's read them together. Listen, a farmer went to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Left on our own, but left on our own, what would we come up with on this? I don't know, maybe Jesus is starting a little side hustle, fund his ministry. Jesus Gardening Guide, subscribe here. You know, this issue, where to put the seed? Later issues, we'll talk about cursing fig trees that don't produce fruit. We'll get there a bit later in future weeks. But thankfully, Jesus doesn't leave us guessing. He explains exactly what's going on just a few verses later. See, this mystery of how to enter God's kingdom, how to enter Jesus' kingdom, his growing kingdom, it's all about our hearts. Mark 4, verse 14. The farmer sows the word. You see, this seed being scattered out by a farmer, it's the word being shared by, by the gospel being preached, either by Jesus, by his followers. Mark 4, 15 to 20. Let's read his explanation together. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown to them. Others, like seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, the desires for other things, come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, some 100 times what was sown. This mystery, it's how we respond in our hearts and our minds to the gospel. Jesus, he's picking up everyday imagery here. His audience have thrown that seed. They've watched it scatter on the ground in front of them to 
you know, bounce off the hard paths, compacted dirt, these paths beside the fields that they are sowing. Their seeds landed as they've thrown it out on rocky soil where they, it just doesn't stand a chance. It's kind of flowing through the air into the brambles, the thorns, the weeds on the side. And like, well, no hope there. There's a warning, do you see? Do, do you want the gospel to bounce off your heart? To be snatched away, stolen by Satan like a seagull grabbing a stray chip at the beach? Do you want it to be scorched, to, to be burnt up? You know, for passionate worship to be replaced with just going through the motions, burnt like a paper when you're starting the fire? Do, do you want it to be choked? You know, like a like a hose that's kinked and the water can't force its way through, struggling to get through a kinked hose. Jesus, Jesus is talking to us here, isn't he? About the worries of life, the deceitfulness, the deceitfulness of wealth, about desires for more and more things. He's talking about me. This is this is us. We say, I've got a lot on right now. I need to focus on my career right now. We say, oh, once I've had a few pay rises, then, then I can focus on Jesus. But we say, I work pretty hard. I need a, a holiday. I need a, a luxury car. I need, maybe it's that iconic Kiwi batch. D do you remember the day? Think back. Is there a day in your past that you could look back to and say, that was when I was passionate about Jesus. That was when I was more passionate than now. You see, Jesus is shaking us up here. He said, don't let these things choke Jesus out of your life. That, don't be like the girl I used to lead kids' church with. The guy I served alongside in university ministry. My mate who was a fantastic evangelist. The parents who say, our kid can decide for themselves about Jesus when they're a bit older do it <laughs> devastatingly devastatingly it might be too late for some of those things only God can know that he's the one that will work but it isn't too late for us as we hear this warning today it's not too late can I, can I ask what's the what's the thing what, what's the thing that will tempt you to withdraw from Jesus? What's the thing that will tempt you to withdraw from the words of his words of life in the scriptures and the Bible? What's the thing that will tempt you to pull back from his people here at church? That thing? Whatever that thing is, we've got to do something about it. We, we really do. That's what we need to do something about. Because there's an alternative, do you see? It's a beautiful alternative. It's a heart ready to receive the gospel. This good news about Jesus, like beautifully prepared soil, ready to receive seed thrown on it. Seed that will take root and grow. To hear the gospel, to understand Jesus' kingdom and to be fruitful. Our kids this morning were kind of running out to the peach tree that's behind the office. Don't tell anyone about it. Um, and they're taking these beautiful ripe peaches. There's something beautiful about a fruitful tree, isn't there? A fruitful harvest to bite into a juicy peach. For that seed to grow and bear fruit 30, 60, 100 times what was planted, that's more than beautiful. That is stunning. Because Jesus, he's teaching the crowds, and we get to listen in. It, 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 we get to sit with the disciples as he's explaining what this teaching means. And we, as we read this parable, do you see Jesus wants us to get it? He wants us to see the beauty of receiving the gospel, of entering his growing kingdom. He, he wants us to hear the good news that he's teaching and for our hearts and our minds to be ready to repent and believe in the gospel. That's his cry 
That's his call. That's his message. Here's a prayer that Jesus loves to answer. King Jesus, my life and my heart are not the good soil I want them to be. The message of Jesus hasn't been able to take root or grow. Jesus, help me to see you more clearly. Soften my heart like soil prepared for planting. Open my mind to accept your forgiveness and receive you as my King and Savior. Jesus loves to answer that prayer. He loves to. Is that something you need to pray today? To ask Jesus to reveal the mystery of how to enter his growing kingdom, to, to welcome you into his kingdom and his family. See, once we've seen that, once we've seen that and grasped that, Mark will now kind of move from how to enter this kingdom to, to explain the mystery of the unstoppable nature of Jesus' growing kingdom. He, he does that by, by grabbing hold of these, this collection of parables, that, these stories that follow. They're all grouped together to paint a picture for us of an unstoppable and growing kingdom, a magnificent kingdom, and it all starts with a lamp. Verse 21, shall we look at that together? He said to them, Do you bring a lamp and put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on a stand? You, you see, you don't light a lamp, right, and, and then cover it up. Your lamps are for seeing, for, for light to fill the room, for to be seen from far away. So, And so is Jesus' growing kingdom. But don't we cover it up all the time as we kind of pull back in our relationship, kind of a bit embarrassed about, yes, I'm a disciple, a follower of Jesus. Once we've seen the lamp, we're back to gardening stories as Jesus shows us the unstoppable nature of Jesus' growing kingdom. Verse 26 and 27. Let's read them together. He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. He said, Nothing will stand in the way of Jesus' kingdom. Nothing. Just like when you you scatter seeds, maybe not in my garden, but you scatter seeds, they take root, they sprout, they grow tall and strong. This is the unstoppable nature of Jesus' kingdom, night and day. Whether the farmer sleeps or gets up, his crops grow. And night and day, Jesus is growing his kingdom. But it doesn't feel like it always, does it? Sometimes it really doesn't feel like it. And that was true for the disciples as Jesus gives them this parable just as much as it is today. Jesus' kingdom here in Mark is gospel. It's a, it's a bunch of disciples who don't get it, crowds who flock to him, but they're really just here for the treats half the time and a growing opposition from the established power. It all looks a bit precarious. It looks a bit uncertain. But Jesus' kingdom is unstoppable. Read with me from verse 30. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. The point here is that the unstoppable nature of it's the unstoppable nature of Jesus' kingdom. You see, it happens on a grand scale. So we need to be careful. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a tiny mustard seed, right? Where's my mustard seeds? Mustard seeds. Look, like... Giant. They're tiny. They're tiny. Like, we don't even have to grind them up to put on our food. Very nice on some um, some ham, but plant one, watch it grow, and watch longer. Like it grows into a tree, watch longer. It the, the, the birds will come and make their nests in it. That's the scale of this from this tiny seed. 
But why doesn't it feel like that? Why doesn't it feel like that? See, 2,000 years since Jesus first taught this parable, where's the magnificent kingdom, you might ask? This large tree, which is grown from that small seed planted by Jesus on the shores of Galilee. What can I say? Look around. Seriously, right now, look around the room. Look around the room. Now, Roscoe Baptist Church, standing in a line of 2,000 years of seeing this kingdom grow. It might only look like, you know, 100 odd people at a half built building. Look closer. Because this is part of a magnificent kingdom. You see, we stand in 2,000 years of the disciples of Jesus standing like lamps with the message of the gospel, preaching that message, going to the ends of the earth, even New Zealand, Aotearoa, with the message of Jesus saying, repent and believe the good news. Standing alongside, do you know right now there are 2.4 billion people who follow Jesus around the world? 2.4 billion people who are part of this kingdom today all around the world. According to the Pew Research Center uh, a couple of years ago, one in three people globally, I'm not quite sure how they calculated all this, it's above my pay grade, one in three people though, one in three. Now, I know it doesn't feel like that in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I know that. Do you know why? Because we've been deceived. As a nation, we've been deceived. That's the devil's game, and he is very good at it, I hope you can see. Stealing seeds as they bounce off hard hearts. Deceived people. In C.S. Lewis' book, The Screwtape Letters, if you haven't read this book, then... Can I recommend it? I've got a copy. I'd love to lend it to you. But in this book, the senior, senior demon, his name is Screwtape, he is um, advising, he's writing letters to advise his nephew, his young demon nephew, a guy named Wormwood. Uh, and, and he's writing this advice on how to deceive this Christian, how to keep this Christian distracted from God, ultimately to destroy their faith. This is what, he, this, is what this, um, this demon writes. He says, you will find that anything or nothing is sufficient to attract his wandering attention. You no longer need a good book, which he really likes, to keep him from his prayers or his work or his sleep. A, a column of, yes, of, ad, of advertisements in yesterday's paper will do. You will say that these are very small sins, and doubtless, like all young tempters, you're anxious to be able to report spectacular wickedness. But do remember, the only thing that matters is the extent to which you separate the man from the enemy. Sorry, that's clipped. From the enemy. The enemy here is God. This is the demon speaking, right? It does not matter how small the sins are, provided that their cumulative effect is to edge the man away from the light and out into the nothing. Murder is no better than cards, if cards can do the trick. He finishes with this. Indeed, the safest road to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. The safest road to hell is the gradual one. That's a scary thought, isn't it? Across all Aotearoa, New Zealand, we're being deceived. We're being deceived. That this King Jesus, who Mark is introducing us to and showing us his, us his kingdom, he's no one of note. We're being deceived that his kingdom has done its dash. This thing of yesterday. Nothing could be further than the truth. Nothing. As Jesus, the Son of God, the King over God's kingdom and family, he reveals this mystery to us through these parables and explains them. Explains the mystery. How do we enter this kingdom, this growing kingdom of the Lord Jesus, and how that kingdom will just keep growing? Nothing will get in its way. 
chufa. Me carqué esta fe. Father, today you've laid out for us this mystery. Through these parables, the mystery of how to enter into your son Jesus' kingdom. And it's all about what's going on in our hearts. So, Father, would you soften our hearts? So, Father, you've revealed the mystery of the unstoppable nature of Jesus' kingdom. Lord, would you protect us from this safe and gradual road to hell, from being deceived by Satan? Ensure our hearts are not hardened, not rocky or shallow, not choked by weeds and thorns or the worries of this life. Jesus, would you prepare our hearts to receive the good news? For our response to the gospel always to be to repent and believe. And through that, would you multiply your kingdom 30, 60, 100 times. In Jesus' precious name.